What would you do if you saw a competitor on national television claiming they were the only one creating a product like it? My guest tonight has a refreshing perspective on competition to share with you. Plus, that product is cookie dough that you can safely eat raw. Everyone say it with me. Yes, please. I'd love some. Welcome to YFE Chat Live, the live stream that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern here on YFELive.com. It is the live stream for young female entrepreneurs. It's a 30-minute show. Use the hashtag YFE Chat to make sure that you're tweeting out your quotables from Rana, that you're connecting with other young female entrepreneurs, and it's going to be really fun because tonight, again, is all about cookie dough, and Rana, as the co-founder, she's going to be telling us a little bit about her startup story. So today's episode is episode 99, and it is brought to you by Oval IT. TV. Ovalai believes in building community through shared experiences. We produce professional live webcasts that bring tribes together. And by MailChimp. MailChimp is the best way to design, send, and share email newsletters. You can get started today at MailChimp.com for free. Don't forget to sign up for our mailing list at yfe.me forward slash mail. That's the best way to stay in the loop with everything young female entrepreneurs. And I should say one other thing before we get started. I got a new Freddy in the mail from MailChimp. Uh, so we we're gonna at one point we'll just be like overtaken by Freddy's. If you guys don't know what Freddy is, he's the little figurine that is the Mailchimp. And I love all of the branding that they do. It's all so well thought out. I mean, there's even a little Mailchimp thing at the bottom, and he has a little heart on his booty. <laughs> it's so cute. So anyway, uh, a few things before we bring Rana on of Edible.com. Make sure that you, uh, by the way, that you like them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram, because the photos that they post are irresistible. So, so yummy looking. So anyway, uh, the action calendar, dailyactioncalendar.com is where you can get in on our daily action. Every day we post something new. Tomorrow is... Um, it's about improving one thing in your business. So make sure that you go over there. It's a Tumblr. You can subscribe to it or also on our mailing list, there's an option to get those sent to your inbox. And then Bootstrap Book Club, our free book club that you can join. It's a Facebook group. We're reading The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene starting on Tuesday. It is a book that's not necessarily made for women. It's actually been adopted by the hip hop community <laughs> when it came out in 2007 50 cent really took to it and they ended up creating an urban version of 48 laws of power uh so it's a really really interesting read it's 48 laws of kind of i don't know you feel almost a little dirty after reading it it's like house of cards um but it, it's, it's a great reminder for us that authenticity and all of that stuff is great, but at the end of the day, we're in business and we need to make sure that we have control over certain things. So uh, make sure that you find out more at yfe.me forward slash bootstrap books. You can join, uh, just a request to join the club and I'll make sure that I approve you. So anyway, that was just a quick recap of what's going on in Young Female Entrepreneurs. Again, this is YFE Chat Live every Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And then we also have our daily show Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, again on YFELive.com. So my guest tonight is a Not Your Cookie Cutter Cookie Dough. Edible as cookie dough purists, their mission is to serve you a bite of handmade cookie dough perfection to instantly remind you just how sweet and simple life can be. So Rana, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let's find out more about Edible. Honey me. <laughs> so <laughs> now the, your story started back at USC. And now, did you go there for your undergrad? We went for graduate school. For graduate school. So, and that was where Edible started, right? Did you have yeah. this idea and then you attended USC? Tell us a little bit about the timeline of how this got going. So I started grad school in 2008, in August of 2008. And right after the first semester was the, the big Nestle recall of 100,000 cases of cookie dough across the country because people were eating it raw and getting salmonella. And so it dawned on me, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only person that eats raw cookie dough. <laughs> Although at the time I was not ever scared of salmonella and typically people aren't. But I thought there's clearly a market for this. So uh, I went, I've always wanted to start my own business. It was, it was kind of what, what jump-started my move into going to business school in the first place. And so I took, a, I took that concept through 
a feasibility analysis, which was a semester long course. And then from there into, I, I had John, who at the time was my best friend in business school. Um, the two of us partnered together for the business plan class. And we took the idea from the feasibility analysis to writing a full business plan. And then we ended up winning the business plan competition. And on that, the judges, the judging panel was actually the CEO of Bristol Farms. And he, he has six kids. And he said that his kids alone would keep us in business. <laughs> so we knew we had an idea that people were taking a liking to. So what's a feasibility analysis? Uh, it's basically just testing the market. So trying to really refine the concept and speaking to as many people as you can in the food industry or the packaging industry, really any industry that'd be related to the product and finding out just information. It's, it's about gathering that information and seeing if this could be a viable business. At the time though, we were actually looking at a gluten-free vegan edible cookie dough. And actually because of the feasibility analysis, we realized that the market would just be way too small if we targeted such a small group of people. That's interesting. What time was, what year was that? This was uh, early 2009. And has that changed if you were to do a feasibility analysis again? Especially, I mean, we're, as a, a couple of the people that work for our company are reading the grain brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it seems like that's where the trend is happening, some type of raw, gluten-free, vegan, that kind of thing. Are you guys going to be getting into that specialty market? We may have a flavor or two, but unfortunately, the flavor is sacrificed with gluten-free products because they don't dissolve. They don't have the same mouthfeel raw as regular cookie dough. And there's already, it's not just, even though we think it's a big market, the cookie dough lovers out there think it's a big market. It's actually just people who eat raw cookie dough is not everybody. So already we have a small limited market. And if we limited it even further, we've removed things like butter, which makes the dough so delicious or, um, or flour. It just it limits the market much much further. I was, so well, I was telling you before I uh, before we went live, I'm seven months pregnant and I could eat just butter all day long. So I definitely understand that. And then a member on our team is gluten free, and I totally agree. Gluten free cookies just they suck. So <laughs> yeah. I know, right? We're all looking. I should have ordered some. They have very like specialized shipping, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But uh, what's so you started this in 2009 as far as the feasibility goes, and now it's 2014. At what point did you actually, I mean, did you do any fundraising? At what point did you put a stake in the ground and say, we are edible, come buy from us? So that was actually rather recently. Um, after 2009, uh, John and I, we decided we needed to actually commit to getting full-time jobs. So I actually started working in the restaurant industry. Uh, John works for Disney. Um, John is my husband and partner. Um, and we, we just, we always had this idea in the back of our minds that this was something we were passionate about and really wanted to pursue, but we just couldn't find the right time in our lives. So we pursued our, our full-time careers. And finally, after continuing to speak to people, almost every week about this concept, it was just, we finally just said, you know what, we've got to just, we got to do it. So we ended up, we got married. So that was a process of just lots of wedding planning. Um, and then after that, we starting January of 2013, we really pursued it. We decided to hire somebody to help us uh, rebrand because at the time after business school, we did have a logo. Um, but we hadn't pursued the website and the actual marketing and branding of the product. So, and this is just you bootstrapping this entire time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. And and we did. We kept. I continued over the years to do recipe testing, and for a while there, I just wasn't happy with the final product because I kept thinking, I don't want people to say, oh, it's good for raw cookie dough, or oh, it's good. I want it. I want it to just be exactly what somebody craves when they crave cookie dough. Um, and to take all that hard work out of it. So you don't have to just get all the ingredients at home to make it from scratch just because you want a couple bites. Um, so we ended up, the, the, the concept started to really develop when we started coming up with flavors and 
um, the quality of our ingredients and just well, really building that brand. So let's talk about the ingredients then because I was just watching last week and I highly recommend everyone check this out. Larry King Now is a show that Larry King has on Hulu and uh, he had a two-parter on GMOs and one of the panelists that he had on was the Chipotle CMO. Now I love Chipotle. I didn't know too much on their stance as far as GMOs go but I know that it's something quality of ingredients is something that they really hold to high standards and I feel like the same thing is uh, is what is kind of how you've built your company and making sure that everything down to the butter to the flowers is of the highest quality which as a you know an at-home baker I would never buy that type of a quality ingredient just to have in my pantry so how did the values ar- around those ingredients come to be I mean is this something that you grew up with or is this just something that you felt like the market that you had researched is looking for Yes, more of the latter. I just thought the competition for this product is pretty much Nestle, which is not an edible cookie dough, but it's one of the only cookie doughs that people con- you know continuously buy um, and eat raw. So now there's also Immaculate Baking Company and Eat Pastry, which is a vegan cookie dough. Um, but those are all filling the market of people who want a cookie that or a cookie dough that they could just bake into a cookie. And that initially with our concept was actually the hardest thing for people to grasp. When we explained that it was an edible cookie dough, they would, everyone would say, but you can bake it, right? And I'm like, no, you can't bake it. That's the whole point. If you want to bake cookies from cookie dough, there's tons of products out there. This is something different. It's for the cookie dough lovers. It's for people that want to just have it in their fridge or their freezer and be able to take a scoop just like you would peanut butter. Um, so the, with the quality of ingredients, I really, given that Nestle was our, our, our true competition um, on the mass level, I just thought, how can we differentiate ourselves even further? And I went with the artisanal route. So I wanted something that was made in small batches, made by hand, made to order, um, and just and and use that as part of our branding. And it really, really makes the quality and the flavor pop. So everything from like the dark calibit chocolate, I mean, I could just eat a brick of it solo. And then just the fact that it's mixed into actual real yummy, creamy cookie dough makes it that much better. So, Rana, you were saying uh, that you were testing out different recipes and things like that early on, and you kept doing that over the years. Are you a baker? Are you someone that went to school for this? I mean, do you have any background as far as compiling ingredients, or was this another thing you had to research? So, also, I kind of fell into the baking world um, by accident, just because I've always loved baking, grew up baking, and um, one summer when I was coming, when I was home from college, I actually got a job as a pastry cook at Spago in Beverly Hills. And from there, I went to culinary school after I graduated from college. And I worked in kitchens in San Francisco. And and I've just been, it's been a passion of mine, baking in general and cooking more specifically. But I absolutely love it. So that's why I wanted to combine my passion for baking. And even though t- cookie dough is not really baking, but it's mixing yummy it's mixing ingredients together. Yes, it's mixing and yummy ingredients. Well, so, I mean, this whole thing is really interesting because I want to clarify for everyone. You know, you said 2009 you went to school. So before that, you went to culinary school. You're, like you said, you were working in the restaurant industry. You've had this passion for baking. You had a friend named John, and now he's your husband as of 2013. And then you had a baby, and you're building this company. I mean, I feel like you are a perfect example of there is no such thing as a good excuse. <laughs> I mean, you said for a second there that you were always waiting for the right time. Uh, what in your mind made that a good time <laughs> for you to get started? I think the good time was what was us realizing that there was never going to be a good time. So the, the good time is just the fact that we absolutely love doing it. We have so much fun coming up with flavors and these descriptions. Um, You know, I have a friend actually who works, she writes copy at Groupon and she's been helping us with our copy to just, we just want it to be really fun and whimsical to really bring out the kid and everybody. Um, So you kind of read the descriptions and and you get to try cookie doughs that you never thought of, uh, you've never thought of as a cookie dough, like peanut, like stuck on you peanut butter and jelly. So we have peanut butter, jelly, cookie dough and just really fun, whimsical flavors. 
I love that. Now, as far as the flavoring goes and and the packaging, and like you said, someone was working on your rebrand. Uh, who's doing all of that? Is that a consultants? You said you're working with a friend uh, that's at Groupon, which, by the way, awesome friend to have. <laughs> uh, so, uh, who's who's doing all of this? So, our the the people that worked with us on our marketing or on our branding initially with our logo redesign and our packaging. We're actually, it was a friend of John's, he used to, John used to work in advertising, and so a friend of his from that world, back before business school, um, he has his own company, and he was able to to help us get this started and, and, and launched, so he helped with the design of the website, but a lot of the brainchild behind the branding is actually John. He's he's very, very creative. He, does, he runs all of our marketing, our social media. Um, all those yummy pictures. It's it's me kind of making what's in the picture, but John's the one with the art, the artistic eye for the fun pictures and really trying to get people involved. But everything's yep. just we we're just doing it all on our own right now. And John is is he still working full time while he's doing this? Then yes, the two of us actually oh both have full time jobs. What? <laughs> Seriously, so, what? How on earth does that even work? So who's so it's oh my gosh. and weekends we get? That's why we we really like the fact that we get to make the dough f- from scratch to order. So we we actually accept orders from Saturday after five p.m. through Saturday five p.m. and everything made between or yeah everything made from after or anything made after it was, it's ordered after Saturday at five p.m until the next Saturday at 5 p.m. is made on Sunday and shipped on Monday. And that's you guys making it again. You yes, so that way fulfilling. we're controlling. Yeah, we're fulfilling it. We're printing all the shipping labels. We're packaging everything. Where is your baby during all of this? Uh, fortunately, I have family very nearby. So they are, she's, she's occasionally on me. I sometimes wear her. Um, she's, she just, she turns a month tomorrow. So oh. she is young enough to not be bothered by any of the noise. Um, but occasionally I have my sister watch her for, for a couple hours and we, and we just do things piecemeal as much as we can. Do you feel like it's safe to say to other moms that are expecting or even young women that are thinking, how could I introduce a baby and a husband and, and all of that stuff into my startup life? Do you think it's possible? I'm constantly, constantly told you can't do that once the baby comes. I mean, that's like a, a copy paste conversation for everyone that I have with with someone. And I always kind of, I just, you know, smile and say, I know, I know. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so do you feel like it's safe to say that this is possible? Uh, would you, what advice would you give to another woman who is in your same position? I think anything's possible. I know it sounds really cliche, but it's just about finding the right mix to get the right support and making it work. If it's really what you want to do, then nothing's going to, nothing is going to satisfy you the same way. So, you know, if it means wearing your baby or finding a a family member to watch a baby or a friend just to, to really help you get started. I mean, there's plenty of stuff that we still have yet to do with this business that we're planning on doing and things just take a little bit longer, but, but you, you do what you can and you make it work. It sounds like patience has been a big thing for you guys. And at a certain point, you just said, screw it. We're just going to get started. And then it seems like you have a very good attitude about everything, which I feel like is a, 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 you know, a basic need as an entrepreneur. You have to have a good attitude. Yeah, we got we got to the point where so much is just theory and what if this and and how about that? And then we thought, well, what if people don't even buy this? So why don't we just get this live? Let's get the website up, get the packaging. We wanted to do everything basic and really focus and highlight the product. And then all of a sudden, after the first, uh, the first thing we did was just email our mailing list. And we had over uh, 200 units ordered. And people have just they keep coming back. So it's been really, so really exciting. What? So you emailed your mailing list. How did you have a mailing list? Uh, that was all John. He had put um, put a mailing list together while we were in business school. So it consisted of a lot of people that just we knew, friends from graduate school, some of the strangers that we met we, when we had our little strangers log during our feasibility class, just meeting people. Um, and, and then through social media, he was directing people to a flash page. And from that, that that page we were collecting email addresses and it's just grown from there so now when people order they can elect to sign on our onto our mailing list they'll get new releases of flavors um, they'll get samples in their orders 
So just collecting that, collecting that data. So, so smart. So here's my big question, Rana. I first found out about Edible on Instagram. Whenever I have a break, I'll pull up Instagram. And Sophie Jaffe is a a, a philosophy. She's a philosophy mama on Instagram for any of you that don't follow her yet. I love her stuff. And I briefly met her when I was down in Los Angeles a couple years ago. So anyway, one of the posts that she had up was raw or edible cookie dough. And I always remember that. And I think I was, you know, just like five months pregnant or something like that at the time. And I thought, I need to order that. Keep it in the back of my mind. And then I watched Shark Tank a few weeks ago. And another edible cookie dough company, kind of the same concept was on. And they were saying, we're the only ones in the market. I was sitting with my husband on the couch yelling at the television saying, (laughs) no, they're not. You guys are, who did their market research? (laughs) And first of all, why on earth would you ever say we are the only ones out there? I mean, it just seems like to me bad. So anyway, what's your take on competition? How has that affected your business uh, as far as being uh, not the only edible cookie dough company? I like things like that because it gives you more more of a way, a way or a reason to differentiate yourself. So I don't I don't enjoy being the only one on the market like you were saying because it proves that maybe there is no market for your product and that's why you're the only one because other people have tried and failed. So for us, I like knowing that there are other companies out there um, that are trying to do this because it shows that there's clearly there's a lot of people that that would enjoy to be able to purchase edible cookie dough. Um, we actually, our business had what we call it, it was the halo effect. We had a lot of orders. We had about triple the amount of orders that we usually do on a week with no marketing, no advertising, um, all because of Shark Tank. So people, because the cook, it, they're, they're called the Cookie Dough Cafe, um, they, they have about three different flavors of cookie dough and they're all wholesale. So they sell to, I think about 80, they're in about 80 supermarkets across the country, which is amazing for them. Um, and again, it just it proves that there is a market for us. And so when people were search, Googling their, their company or Googling edible cookie dough to see if they really were the only ones out there, we actually came up and, and you, can, you can order directly from us. So we had what's, what we're calling the halo effect and we had some pretty good business from it. See, and then you didn't even have to give up 5% equity and, and exactly. all that fun stuff. <laughs> so congrats on that. I think that's a refreshing, because it's funny, I emailed uh, you guys to get to set up a, a guest appearance on this, and uh, your husband emailed me back and said, I just want to clarify, we weren't the company that was on Shark Tank. Yes. I'm like, oh, I know, I know. I know. Um, so I did think that was funny that you guys are having that type of an effect or getting that, but I, wa- I wanted to drag this home because competition, I feel like, if you you see another person doing what you do in, in any way there's always some kind of internal like I don't know your blood just kind of boils or no matter what there's that kind of a reaction to it but it, you do bring up a good point that the more the merrier more reasons to differentiate more reasons to set yourself out there and also to piggyback on other people's marketing I went to go get um to pick up wine for a dinner and the our little we're in uh, the Seattle area and there's a, a wine area over here and uh, you pull up to one winery tasting room and there's 70 others around it and my husband was thinking you know how does this make sense you, you're around all of your competitors but if I'm showing up for one winery I'm gonna go and probably visit the next five tasting rooms so I think there's always some kind of value in competition is there any other advice that you would give to other young female entrepreneurs that are experiencing seen something similar where maybe they just met they show up at a networking event and there's another designer there or something like that what other words of wisdom would you want to make sure that they leave with I say study your competition learn as much as you can about them do your research and then really be honest with yourself and ask yourself what do they do really well and what do you think can be done better and how how do they feel they're differentiating themselves and how is your product or your service different um, because I think you can learn a lot from your competition. And there's, we live in such a big world with, I mean, just sitting in traffic on my way home from Santa Monica, I just look around at all the cars and I'm like, there's all these people. And I just, I sit and I wonder how many of them eat raw cookie dough. But then really, you know, that that's what, it's just this big world. And it's about finding, fi- finding the right buttons really and making sure that your product is filling a niche, whatever that niche, how big or how small, 
maybe it's finding that niche and and making your product fill that need so the last question that i wanted to leave everyone was with is other than shark tank uh, you guys have been featured in Daily Candy. How have you generated buzz? You said that you started out with a mailing list and got 200 orders. Do you focus primarily on that and getting people to go into your email marketing? Do you focus on having them like your Facebook page? Where is it that's converting the best for you right now? So right now that we're really only doing a couple things and that's the mailing list, social media, so Instagram and Facebook, um, and then lastly is our is bloggers. We actually have not had great success with blogs, surprisingly. And I think it might be that same going back to competition. There's so many bloggers out there. They have they have their own, their own niche and their own followers. Um, and so it's really probably trying to find that sweet spot. But one of our plans for 2014 is to really look at look over a profit and loss statement and like true business school students and <laughs> and and try to be smart about the business and figure out you know how much money we can spend on maybe on coming up with a true real marketing plan and marketing and PR maybe looking at doing what we can with celebrity endorsements or advertising um, you know if we want to get into print or um, or staying staying small and niche uh, maybe we're maybe it's about finding the right blog so you know, social media has, has definitely got us up off to a right start and we're, you know, people are loving the product and right now we're small enough where we get to continue to interact with our customers, which I love because we can, we can develop these personal relationships with them. Um, and once we, once we get bigger, uh, it's going to be more difficult to be able to really maintain that relationship and welcome that feedback that we get on a day-to-day basis. That's a great point as far as being the one on the social media account, especially at the beginning, because you are listening directly to your consumer and seeing what it is that they're interested in purchasing or what they're loving. So that's Mm -hmm. a great point. So where can everyone find out more about Edible Order, follow you, that type of a thing? So we are, our Instagram is at It's Edible. Um, We're at Edible, uh, it's Edible on Facebook and uh, we are edible.com and it's Edible spelled very cleverly, E-D-O-U-G-H-B-L-E.com. So it's spelled it's like edible, but pronounced edible because it's edible dough. When did you buy that domain name, by the way? Uh, that I purchased in 2009. Okay, so you've been sitting on it for a while. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you really had this idea way back then and you stuck with it. Yep. That's awesome. And, and it's been, and, and all that time, there's only, I guess, that one other competitor. And, and I'm just waiting to hear every day. I'm like, is Nestle going to come out with an edible cookie dough? Yeah, but, but even you, so, you're and the, even so, yeah. Well, and even so, it's not going to have the quality ingredients because right. that's not Nestle. Yeah, and I think people are trusting Nestle and companies like that less and less every day. So, uh, Rana, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was I was very excited to chat with you, not only because I'm craving cookie dough, but also because of your story and all the things that you and your husband have done so well, strategically well, um, in the past few years. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was fun. All right, everyone. So we've just been listening to Rana. She is the co-founder of Edible.com along with her husband, John. And like we were saying, she has a one-month-old baby. I cannot believe that she's here tonight. I'm so grateful for her to come, uh, for her uh, to show up. Uh, make sure that, again, you check it out. It's at edible.com. We're going to bring Stacy on shortly, and we'll go over everything uh, once I say goodbye to Rana. Uh, make sure that you stick around in the chat. Chat with people. Use the hashtag YFE Chat Live. If you're watching this in the replay on YouTube or iTunes or on the blog or wherever, make sure that you add a comment and let us know what you think about your competitors. Do you pay attention to them? Do you try and not look too closely so you're not copying whatever they're doing? Uh, give us the 411 below in the comments. You've been watching YFE Chat Live, the live show that happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. I've been your host, Jennifer Dono. Hope to see you back here for our 100th episode next Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on yflive.com. Thanks, everyone. Bye.